just uh, be thankful and you know don't uh, get pressured into doing it if you don't want to. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about some equipment with bull riding, some shoot procedures, some safety tips and things like that. So uh, we're going to start off I guess at the top with equipment and work our way down. So we've got our helmet off the top. Um, I like to talk to it as my brain bucket because uh, obviously you got protection. Most helmets are, are made basically the same. They've got a hard outer shell, then your face mask. Inside is made up of a soft material. Some are gel, some are foam, and a chin strap. Helmets are very important with the safety and the longevity of your career. Next piece of safety equipment we're going to go to is our vest. There's a couple of manufacturers of a vest. Uh, there again, they're made up basically the same way. This one's a leather outer shell. You can get a canvas outer shell. The inside is made up of a foam dense material. It's not Kevlar and it's not bulletproof. But it's, uh, what it does is it's designed to, when you get stepped on, disperses the energy instead of the impact being in one spot, it disperses it. It's just like paddles. The wider they are, the easier you get through the water. If they're thin, they go through it. This will help you from uh, you know, major injuries, not saying you can't break ribs, not saying you can't get injured still with the vest, but they will reduce the chances of being hurt. Then we're gonna go down to the shaps. Shaps, back in the old cowboy days, served a good purpose for safety. Wearing them riding horses, going through the brush, you rope a calf, rope lays over your thigh, shaps were for safety. Same thing in rodeo events like in the, in the saddle bronc riding, you have the swells of, of your saddle on your thighs. You don't really have that in bull riding. However, you get in the chute, you got one that's busting you up in there, they will help protect your legs in the chute. Uh, you can see I've got sponsors on mine anymore in the bull riding, shaps are just a billboard. They do serve a minor, minor purpose in safety. Next piece of equipment that we'll go down to is your feet. You got spurs. They're not sharp by any means. I can rub them up against my face. They're not going to cut me. There's no sharp edges. If you do end up cutting a bull in the PRCA, you can get fined. So animal safety is a big thing when it comes to your spurs. They do roll a little bit. They are locked, however. That way it helps you get a good hold with your feet because when your feet get behind you, generally you get jerked down. They don't go in your rope. These are wide enough and they're dull enough. They can't get stuck in your rope. So these are just a way to kind of help you keep your feet in the right spot. If your feet aren't in the right spot, you're probably gonna get bucked off. They, can't, they won't do it automatically. Next piece of equipment we're gonna go to is just be the rope and the glove. These two work together. You can see there's a lot of sticky stuff. That's rosin. Rosin's just like uh, with a violin. When it gets warm, it gets sticky. Same stuff. You get it on the tail of your rope and you got it on the handle of your rope. So you just put your glove on, it's made up of a, of a thinner type of uh, leather. This is a deer skin. You can get them thicker, you can get them thinner. That's personal preference on how you like to make it feel. You just put it on and then in you, you can see that it's not sticky now at all. As soon as you warm it up, it gets sticky. Okay. This is how your rope and your glove work together. Now let's look at your rope a little bit closer. You've got different parts of your rope. We'll start off at the tail. This is what goes through your hand to hang on. This goes into the wear strip of your rope and you can see how it gets its name because that's where the, the tail of your rope goes through the body and I'll explain that a little bit more in a second. Then you come up to the handle and your handle is completely custom for what you want to do. Mine is full laced and then it skips laced because I've had some wrist injuries. I need my handle to be a little bit softer just for my wrist. And that's my personal preference. Then you go to your risers, which is the, about the backbone of your bull, your bull rope because without your risers, your handle breaks down, it rolls over, you get hung up more. Then you go to your block and then your body, all the way down to your bells. Your bells, the only, the only purpose of your bells is for weight to drag your rope off after you get off. You have to have a bell or you will be disqualified. It's just that simple. When you get your rope and you take your wrap, 
you stick your hand in your handle and this can vary also you can see I stick mine in it's a little bit farther than some guys some guys may only go to there but that's personal preference on how it feels to you you pull your rope tight you lay it across once come behind and then back through and that's just your basic wrap you can leave a bubble behind your hand if you would like this is an exaggeration but you can see the purpose of it there's a little bit of a bubble so it doesn't pinch your hand there again that's personal preference for what you want and how good it feels to you that's kind of the quick breakdown of what we've got for equipment and now we're going to move over to shoot procedure all right they started to load the bulls for us get ready for uh, my event for the bull riding so i don't know this bull from adam so you always approach the bulls as if they're going to kick hook at you, be a little bit mean so that you can protect yourself from an injury when you're just getting ready to set your rope. So I always just kind of walk up to them, never go close to their head because uh, you can see obviously he can stick a horn out. You always approach them about the midsection. Don't get too far back because then they can cow kick and then they might even get a leg through and then there again that's safety for the bull. So you just approach him. He's looking okay. I'm going to go ahead and just drop my rope over the top of him. Nice and easy to start with. Just let him know that you're here. Okay, you approach him midsection and you're just gonna slide your rope over him. Let him know you're coming first in case he does have a little kick. He might be sleeping and just uh, not know that you're there. One important thing in setting your rope, this is just what I do, is I wanna stay on the same side of the bull all the time. So you can see I dropped the tail on my rope this time. I didn't even drop the body because I know that I can hook it this way. You don't have to stand up above them because then they can kick in there. You can bust an ankle. There's just a lot of different things. So I try to stay out of the buck and shoot as much as possible. Now I've got just my general hook. I drop my tail. It's got a little bend to it. And you can just reach through. You reach through. You can hook it and then just bring it right up. Never stick your hands in here. Never stick anything through because a bull can kick in there. Um, you just don't know. They're animals and obviously they're a little cantankerous sometimes. So I've got the tail of my rope now, and you just roll it all the way around. Me personally, I like my bells to be in front, which puts your bells farther up under the brisket of the bull in between his legs so that generally they won't come up and smack you in the shin when you're riding them. So I like my bells to be in front towards the head of the bull. You run the tail of your rope through, the, through your loop, and it goes all the way down. So now your rope's on him, but now you need to adjust it for size because every bull's a little bit different. Some of them are deeper bodied, slap sided. Some of them are thick and short bodied. So every bull's a little bit different. Your rope can be adjusted accordingly. The way that I like to do it, so that there again, I never crawl in the chute with the bull until I'm ready to actually get on him and ride him. And this is part of knowing your equipment. I know that when I pull the rope to my tightness that I like, my rosin will be at the same spot every time. So I put the end of my handle right in the middle of his back, snug it up, obviously not tight. My rosin's here. I want it to be here because then I know when I get in the chute and pull my rope tight, it's gonna be perfect in my hand. So right now my rope's a little bit short. I need to make it just a little longer. So I roll my rope over and how you make your rope longer is you want to move your knot away from your block. That's, a, that's an easy way because your rope needs to be longer. This part of, your, part of your rope needs to be longer. So you just adjust it out a little bit. And then check it again. Look at that rosin starts right at the end of my my handle not once did I ever crawl over the bull and I didn't even have to pull it up really tight to check it that saves wear and tear on things um, it, it eliminates the fact of pulling it up tight and a bull can kick bull gets the fighting so now I know my rope is set and I'm ready to ride okay now I'm really getting ready because they're probably running barrels and it's getting time so I get ready to tie my glove on there's different ways you can do it you can tape your glove on I prefer to tie mine on it just, it's more comfortable to me. I don't have to buy as much tape. I don't leave a roll of tape behind the chutes. It's just, for me, it works better because at some rodeos come bull riding time, bull riders are the only ones behind the chutes. So being uh, self-sufficient is, is good. I just uh, start wrapping it. I put it in front of that little bone there, wrap it around a couple of times. Mm -hmm. 
just keep going around. I'm, I'm hurrying for demonstration purposes. It's generally a little bit cleaner, but uh, I can do all of this myself. I don't have to rely on anybody else. That way, if there isn't much help behind the shoots, you can get it done. It's the same every time, so you're more efficient, your routine isn't thrown off, and then that way you're ready to focus on riding. So now I've got my glove tied on. I'm ready to go. When you crawl into the chutes, just like when you were setting it, you don't want to just jump at the bull. So you want to let him know you're coming. So what I generally do is I get ready, always have a hand on the rail, and just stick your foot on his back. You can see he moved, twitched his tail a little bit, but he knows I'm here now. Then go ahead and kick this leg over, cross over, put your other hand on the other side, because you never know if a kick might be coming. Stick both your feet right in the middle and then go ahead and drop down. Always have your hands on both sides so that if he kicks in there, you can catch yourself. Because right now for this demonstration and then like I said at a lot of rodeos, you may not have as much help. You might not have somebody here to spot you. So you kind of got to be ready for anything. Go ahead and pull your shafts back out of the way so that they don't get up under your rope when you pull it tight and everything like that and everything's kind of ready. So, loosen it up and then what we'll do is I'll just tell my, I'll just tell my guy just to go ahead and pull it up. And then you warm it up. This is just getting your rosin sticky. Get it good and warm a couple times and you can already see that it's getting good and sticky. And then I just go ahead and slack it off. Now for this demonstration, I'm not wearing my helmet because we're obviously filming and I'm not gonna nod my head on this bull, but we're just gonna show you what it's like. So I would have my helmet on and be ready to go at this point, spurs and everything. What I do here is I'll roll my rope over and I'll just shake my bells down. That makes sure that my bells fall to the very bottom side of the bull so that they don't ride up and be around where your feet are. And then just roll your rope back over. Rule of thumb, when you get ready to pull your rope, you want to put your pinky right in the middle of this bull's back. So I stick my hand in my handle. My pinky's right in the middle of his back. You don't have to stick it way up here, pull it, and then pull it back. I see a lot of guys trying to pull skin out when they're pulling it. The first jump, this bull's skin's going to go where it wants. Your rope is actually going to go to the smallest part of the body of the bull. So you just kind of figure out where you want it, and then go ahead and start pulling it up. He pulls it pretty tight. I'll pull it back and check it, see how it doesn't come back any farther, and it doesn't go forward any farther. So this rope just conformed to where the bull is. We'll go ahead and pull it just a little bit more, and that's tight enough for me. I go ahead and take it, and as I demonstrated earlier, across your hand, behind, and back through. Pound it down. You can put your tail of your rope up here, I do that, it's just kind of the way I've always been taught. I see some guys throw it behind them. This is almost better, but I've just done it that way so long that if you do it this way, you don't throw it up there, the bull feels it, throws his head around, whatever. You can throw it behind you just like that. Slide up on your rope and you're ready to knock. We just showed you you're ready to ride and then you go out and you make the ride of your life, but then what happens next? I mean, everybody practice riding but you want to also practice getting off because you getting off correctly and safely every time will actually help you elongate your career. So getting off is important and having bullfighters is important because if a bull's spinning into your hand, you want them to pick the bull's head up and take him away from your hand to get off properly. If you try to just get off away from your hand, which meaning I'm riding right-handed and I try to get off away from my hand to the left side of the bull, you can actually get hung up. You don't want that to happen because then you can get your legs stepped on and everything like that. But say you do get hung up, first thing you want to do is get to your feet. Uh, you don't want to just hang there and drag and just cry for your mama. You want to get up to your feet and uh, try, actually try to get as close to the bull as you can because that'll take pressure off your hand and that'll give your bullfighters a chance to step in. If there's two bullfighters, one of them's going to go to the head, the other one's going to go to the tail of your rope. Uh, if there's three, they can work it different ways. Sometimes maybe in the practice pen you might only have one and it might be your best buddy. So you need to be prepared to take care of yourself as best you can, and by doing that is getting to your feet and getting as close to the bull as you can to take pressure off and get your hand out. All right, we talked earlier about how getting off and being able to get off 
can elongate your career. Well, think about it this way. Say you get off into your hand and you made a good dismount. That bull may be hooky and he may try to come eat your shorts. So your ride really isn't over until you're out of the arena. So you want to get up and move to the chutes. You want to get up on the fence and locate the bull. Your bullfighters can take him away and everything like that, but then you just got to have awareness of where everything is at because this is your business and you need to take care of it. So get up, get to the fence, get up on the, get up on the fence, and then you can relax. Okay, today we're talking about safety. And a lot of, uh, you know, you young guys starting out, uh, when you start to ride bulls or, or barebacks or saddle broncs, uh, you know, it's good to get acquainted with the arena you're at. Uh, I see a lot of young guys in the bull riding, uh, you know, if they do make the ride or get bucked off and they're a little disoriented, a lot of times they run straight to the out gate. Make sure you know where the out gate is. Don't run to the out gate. Make, a, make yourself familiar with the arena before you ride. When a bull rider, you know, makes a qualified whistle, we're there to straighten that bull out so you can get off as safely as possible. Listen, when that whistle blows, way to jump and make sure we got that bull straight so you can get off so you're not getting off into, uh, away from your hand or anything. If you're a bull rider and you get a hung up, you know, if you can stay to your feet, that's gonna be great because we're gonna be there to straighten the bull and somebody's gonna be there to get your hand on freed. The ride's not over till you're out of the arena. When you hear that whistle, wait for the bullfighters to straighten the bull, get off and hustle on out of there. Uh, I see so many guys get run over because they turn around to look at the big screen replay or something else, you know. Get to the arena, make sure the bull's out of the, out of, out of the arena, and then you can go back and get your hat or your rope, but most of the time the bull, bullfighters are gonna get your rope for you. I see a lot of kids today, uh, they're around all their buddies and stuff and everybody's texting and, and on the phones. Think about you're going to ride a bull. You know, you don't need to be texting everybody. Put it on your mind. You're out here to win. If you're not out here to win, you don't want to be here. So uh, get it on your mind. Get yourself focused at what you're going to do and uh, be safe and have fun. Long time ago, my dad told me one time that there's a fine line between cockiness and confidence and you need to walk it because you need to be positive in this sport. You need to know that when you get in that chute that you're going to ride that bull because if you doubt yourself one little bit, you're probably not going to ride him. So that's the confidence end of it. But you don't want to be cocky either because Ty Murray once said either you win something or you learn something. And every time you get bucked off, you did something wrong. That's a guarantee or you wouldn't have got bucked off. So you need to learn from your mistakes and then be open to suggestions from either mentors, uh, colleagues, whoever is with you in the vehicle. They might have saw something that you didn't realize happened, but don't go at it with the mentality that you know everything because you can always learn something. I'm still learning at, my, at this stage in my career. I'll always be learning something and you can too. Thank you for your attention during this rodeo safety video, and we hope you've learned something about proven safety techniques from the professionals. You can never learn enough about this sport. Keep going to rodeo schools, always remember your safety practices, and make sure your equipment is set up right. The Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association and the National High School Rodeo Association do not endorse products or manufacturers. Read the rule book of the association you compete with regarding the rules and equipment requirements. From all of us to all of you, good luck in your rodeo competition.